Today we'll be allocated to a certain part of the river. I think we're going to be heading down to the lower reaches. Um, there's a, a couple of incidents down there that we need to check up on. Um, but as, as part of the, the rest of the day, um, we, uh, we get in contact with um, uh, other departments to see if there's any issues. We, uh, we uh, check compliance um, issues with other vessels. Um, and we'll also keep an eye on some riverbank projects because that's obviously what I do in my substantive position. Um, it's still good, you know, it's an opportunity for me to, to catch a, a, a riverside uh, perspective of those shoreline projects. My name's Marcus Nordstrom. I work at the Swan River Trust as a project officer um, and I've been at the Trust for over four years. I originally started out as a river park operations officer. I did that for three years. As a river park officer, I was located at Ellum Street in Victoria Park. So that was the location of the uh, of the tree damage, was it? Yep. Okay. All right. And um, and just so you know, um, there's a significant limb that's fallen down onto the jetty at uh, Tramby Reserve. I don't know if there's any chance that you guys can pick that up next time you're out in a patrol. Yeah, I should be able to talk to the waterways boys and get that done this week. Excellent. All right. Thanks for that. Great. Hi, Sarah. Hi Marcus. Just to let you know, I'm heading to Success Hill later on today. Um, the bulk of my work at the Trust as a project officer is to work alongside foreshore land managers. Um, they include local governments and state agencies. Uh, and working alongside them, we were able to implement uh, foreshore stabilisation around the river, um, basically mitigating any, any threats to, um, to environmental values, social, cultural, uh, safety issues. Uh, that's the bulk of our work. Um, we do that through um, implementing projects around the river, some of them funded by the Trust, um, and, uh, and other ones we, we provide uh, advice for local governments implementing their own projects. A typical project for us uh, would come through to us from a particular local government authority. From there, I'll do a lot of research into uh, particular designs, or stabilisation techniques that they plan to use. Originally, this shoreline here was, um, it had completely failed. There was a, an embankment that posed a bit of a safety risk. Um, the consultants drew up a design that included regrading or reprofiling the shoreline. Um, then we installed uh, erosion control matting, uh, brush mattressing uh, in the intermediate zone, and then a rock toe protection. And that protects this shoreline from, um, from any, uh, any, any wind waves, any boat wake, um, and also high tides. Uh, it's obviously been revegetated, which has taken off really well. Um, and yeah, so this has been a, a good outcome uh, for the city of Belmont and for the Swan River Trust, obviously for the river as well. If you take a look over this side here, this is a section that hasn't been completed yet. This is an area where there's obviously a failed shoreline. Uh, the original log pile walling um, is completely failed and, um, and uh, has got no, no resistance to that, that energy, that boat wake. The qualifications I needed to get into the Swan River Trust as a river park officer, um, I had a degree in environmental science from Murdoch University, um, but I also had three years of experience at uh, Botanic Gardens and Parks Authority as a uh, bushland restoration officer. A critical part of stabilisation is revegetation. It's a, it's, it's a, a bioengineering um, a component. Um, so for, for an area like this where you've got uh, significant embankments, you use the, uh, the vegetation and the, and the roots to, uh, to basically bind the soil and hold it together. As a project officer with the Swan River Trust, I have to do regular inspections of sites during the construction phase. Uh, when I'm here, obviously, I'll be checking for um, uh, adherence to planning and designs. But at the same time, one of my key roles is to, um, is to inspect the property and to make sure that there are no detrimental environmental effects taking place. Uh, for example, um, ensuring that there's no plumes entering into the river as part of the construction and also uh, making sure there's no unexpected vegetation damage. The design component, if it, if it gets quite technical, we often seek advice from consultants, engineering, coastal engineering consultants, uh, but we do fall back on our best management practice, which has been designed by engineers, um, and that's, that's our, our bible, so to speak. See, that's the limb coming from there, yeah. These are a little holes, and they're all the way around. I don't know how structural it is now, how deep those borer holes go. Yeah, yeah. It's just on that outer couple of centimetres and it's probably fine. But if they go right to the core, it's not going to take much yeah. to, you know, send it over. 
They've been having a few bonfires down here still. One of the highlights of this job is seeing the outcomes to these projects. Uh, you start off with a, a you know a, a bit of foreshore that's in poor condition, and the outcome may end up being a, a stabilised foreshore, which is ultimately what we want. But as well as that, we may get increased uh, access for public. Uh, we may get uh, services, um, for example, you know, kayak launching ramps, um, uh, fishing platforms like we've got here at Success Hill. Um, but yeah, uh, even aesthetically, you know, you have a look at some of these sites and they, they look beautiful once they're done and hopefully for years to come.